Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the real Hatfield Town here on Football Manager 2021. Last time out then uh, was the live stream over the weekend and it was a very, very surprising result actually. I was not expecting us to beat Stevenage the way we did, but we did. Uh, we beat them 4-0, goals from Baker, two goals from Baker, one from Hollis and one from Cantwell. The youth players are now starting to come through and do the business for us, which is really exciting to see. Um... Also, yeah, I wanted to check the attendance. 611, 300 of which were away fans, which is awesome. Since then, I've beaten Reading City 5-0. Um, Spellthorn, Spelthorn, Spellthorn Sports 6-1. And this one I was very surprised by as well. We beat Cambridge 2-1. This is a Cambridge team who are one step away from being promoted to League One in real life. And yet here, we beat them 2-1. Goals from Gadger and Harding. Very good goals as well, if I recall, from Gadger and Harding. Um, in fact, I might as well show you both of those goals because they were both absolute cracking finishes. Watch goals. Come on, game. Work for me. Here we go. So, yeah, this is the first one. I was playing Studholm as a right winger for this match. I thought I'd try that out and see how we went. Uh, I also had Gadger playing as a cam and that was the first goal. Great pull back to the edge of the box and absolutely leathered that into the back of the net. And then the second goal, uh, oh this was the Cambridge goal. Poor pass here from Stone and then Nibs running in behind. Manages to get past Smith and finishes it into the back of the net. And then our goal, our second goal, the winning goal of the game. Uh, a two here with the pass to Studholm. You can see Harding taking up his place there. Ball comes to him. Great first touch. And then that second touch is an absolutely sensational finish from James Harding. Um, let me just pop back here then. So, good pre-season. Really good pre-season. We've got one more game to go. Now, I said in the stream that the first match was going to be against Stopfold here. Uh, that would be the first match of the season. Uh, sorry, that would be the first... Uh, that will be in today's episode, sorry. The first match of the season will be in today's episode. That is no longer the case. I'm actually going to play this friendly here against Welling uh, as today's episode, which means that the stream this weekend will be the first league match of the season against Stockfold. Um, the reason I chose to do that was because I want to do some tweaks today with player and team instructions. And there's also going to be a small tweak. Uh, actually, maybe not. I was about to say this might be a small tweak with the match plan, but I don't think there needs to be. I think everything there is fine, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, but I want to make some tweaks to the overall tactics for when I'm not using the match plan. So right now, I'm going to turn off the match plan so I don't forget in a second. And this is what I want to look at. So first of all, having this set to positive is good, but this needs to change. So passing directness, actually shorter, yeah, that's fine. This is fine. That needs to come back on. Uh, mixed crosses, that's all fine. I want to say dribble less for now, but be more expressive still. I want to try and get them to pass it around a little bit more, because right now we're not really doing that. Uh, in transition then, I want to throw it long to the flanks. I don't want to do long kicks, because that's a bit pointless. And then out of position, this is the bit where we need to change things. So pressing intensity, much more urgent. Uh, much higher line of engagement as well. Higher defensive line is fine. Force the opposition outside. Actually, yeah, I'm okay with that. That's also good. And we won't use the offside trap because that's a bit pointless. So that's that side of things done. But now I want to have a look at individual player instructions as well. Because some of these are also a bit crappy. So take fewer risks. I'm fine with that. Now run wide with the ball I would quite like you to do. But I think is inverted wing back your actual best position? No. Not at all. Wing back is actually a two's best position. So we are going to switch this to, uh, I think it said defend. So we'll go with defend. And then because of that, we can change the instructions here. So run wide, stay wider, definitely. Um, crossing and shooting and that, we're going to leave at default. We'll let the player decide for himself. But yeah, staying wider, holding position, things like that. Those were the, the, the main things. Uh, you'll also notice that Nash now has a face. Um, don't read too much into that right now. I will explain what that is all about in just a second. Uh, you're actually a no-nonsense fullback when you're playing in the left-back role here. So let's get you set up for that. And because of that, uh, yeah, running 
running wide, stay wider, all this stuff, that is fine, no nonsense, is absolutely great for those. So Saddler, we've got some stuff here as well, like taking fewer risks, I'm going to untick that, shorter passing, that should be fine, holding position, I am actually going to have that ticked on, because I think one of the problems we do have is we get caught a little short at the back sometimes, same here, uh, Evans is currently set to hold position, I'm also going to untick that, let you do your own thing, that's fine. Hammond with the ball winning midfielder, shorter passing, all this stuff, yeah, leave at default, which might look boring, but when the player's got good decision making, this might be the best strategy to do. Same here, just untick all of these. Uh, get further forward, I'm fine with. Move into channels, I'm also going to untick actually, because um, I want him to kind of make the central run. We'll experiment with that. That's what the friendly match is for. We're going to experiment and see whether or not that's actually a smart thing to do. Um, yep, we'll confirm that then. Hudson Doncaster, I do want to run into the channels, which he does do, so that's fine. These as well, we're also going to untick. And then stud home on the side here. Roaming. I'm going to leave you on roaming, actually, because you do make a lot of space when you do that. Uh, because of that, though, you do kind of want a wing back when you've got an inverted winger. In fact, you aren't playing as an inverted winger, which is an issue. There we go. So some of this stuff, yeah, some of this stuff is now different. I think, yeah, for this, I'm just going to leave that on default. Leave this on default. Cut inside with the ball, I'm fine with because you can't untick that anyway. Roam from position, that's also fine. Whether you cross or not, that's irrelevant right now. So that's all good. Gonzalez Velasco on this side, same thing. We're going to turn off roaming because that was something that was annoying me about him the other day was he was roaming too much. I kind of want him to stay in his position out on that side. And then Baker, uh, that and that we will untick and that is fine. So what was that face on Nash? Well, uh, thank you to Zealand, I think it is, on um, FM Base. Uh, I was watching his YouTube tutorial earlier because I thought, well, why not actually do it? Uh, I've been wanting, I wanted to do it last year in FM20, but I couldn't get it to work. But this year, I do actually have it working. So all new gens, regens, whatever it might be, that were generated during our first season have now been allocated AI-generated faces which sounds like something out of a sci-fi film, but um, it's very much possible and it's so freaking cool to see it. So some of our players like Gadger here, he was a regen player that was um, converted into a first team player. So he has a face because he is technically a regen. But the players who I added into the game at the start, like Tuttle, for example, is not a regen, therefore does not yet have a face. Now, some of these players... Um, who have faces, for example, the Chowdhury twins, their faces look absolutely nothing like them. Um, there is a solution for that. Do not worry. What I'm going to do is get faces, uh, facial photos of the actual first team squad. Uh, I don't know how feasible this is actually going to be right now, so they might still just be silhouettes for now. But the idea is to get um, photographs of the players cut out from the shoulders upwards, and then that will go into the game. So, for example, Nash, Gadger, the Twins, um, who else came through? Reed, and I think that's it for first team players who came through uh, as regens. They will all have their faces replaced. Everyone else will have their faces added. But other regens, like Jacob, for example, this is Jacob's face now. This is what he looks like in the game. So, yeah, unless they're, unless he gets changed into another first team player, which I'm not planning on doing now. Uh, as you remember, I said on Saturday. Saturday? When did I stream? It was Saturday, wasn't it? Um, most of the regens who've come through will actually just stay as regens who've come through and we'll call out the first youth in, uh, intake. But other youth players will get added into the under-23 squad and things like that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm choking on air again. This is Jacob's face now. And... To use another example, if I go into the under 23s and squad, uh, actually, no, the under 18s and squad is probably a better one. So let's choose a random person, Rice Puto. This is his face now. Uh, and this is, as I said, it's a really cool pack. 
If people want me to leave a link to it in the description, I will do, or I might just have it as a pinned comment for this particular video. But you can go on FM Base, and there's a thing on the right hand side. It's like top links kind of thing. And if you go on Regen Faces there, uh, I think there's a link to the YouTube video there as well. But it's really cool. It doesn't take too long to do. Uh, the download speed is the thing that takes the longest, really, because it's, it's like a 9 gig download. Um, and also I had some problems running the program the first time that actually generates the faces and applies them to players. But once you get that uh, sorted, I think my problem was I had the wrong version downloaded, so it wasn't working very well. Once I got all that fixed, it was very, very quick. In fact, it took less than a minute for it to add all my regen faces. And yeah, every regen. So I used the, the video tutorial from Zealand. Um, every single player that was generated during the first season now all have faces applied and every year at the end of the season when the the latest youth intake comes through i will run the program again and they will get faces too so this is what martin mclean looks like now or adam mcglade now some of these faces don't quite add up like this guy here does not look 16 but i believe his face will stay the same now throughout the entire series so same with noah main he does not look 16 but as he gets older uh, this face will start to match. He's also from New Zealand. I did not know that. Uh, and then Smith as well, who's our third choice goalkeeper. This is what he looks like, and so on and so on. So we've done the um, the tactic stuff that I wanted to do today. I think that was all of the tactic stuff I wanted to do today. today that I wanted to do today. The match plan stuff I'm pretty happy with, but the player instructions were slightly conflicting with the team instructions, and that was starting to have a detrimental effect, particularly in um, matches that where I was in control. But this is uh, what we're looking like for now. And I think I'm just going to go straight into the match. I won't just do a second um, recording like I normally would do. I just do want to change one more thing. Oh, I've also updated kits. So if I now go Stevenage. So their 2D kit, I think, was in the game anyway. But their 3D kit, I've now added. And I don't know, actually... Oh, they've got David Healy as their manager. Uh, were they relegated? No. It's a shame Ravel's gone, though. That's kind of sad. So if, I don't know if I can watch this back and it have the updated kit or not. Let's find out. It might still have their old kit. Now, I know what their kits look like, so I'll be able to tell what you which season it is, whether it's the updated one or not. I am currently working on getting the logos in as well. Oh, I think that is the updated kit, actually. That's cool. Uh, just to watch this goal back from Baker as well. That was a fantastic finish. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I think it's up. Yes, it has. It's updated the kit. That's awesome. Great stuff. Uh, how do I exit this now? Are oh, there? So yeah, we're going to go into the match then against Welling. Uh, I kind of have an idea for what I'm doing. Come on, game. Uh, what I'm doing with the lineup. Um, I think I'm. I'm basically going to go with the team that I want to play in the first game of the season. We have had some, excuse me, we have had some injuries. So Argent has a partially torn abductor uh, muscle. That says adductor. I don't know if that is another muscle or whether they've just misspelled abductor. But he's out for between 12 days and 4 weeks, which is an incredibly painful injury by the sounds of things. So we wish him well. Akram's also returning to full fitness, so he's not quite ready to start this game. Uh, and I also have Christian Sadie, who you might remember from last year. Uh, he played for us in non-league for a bit. Was a good player, actually. Very good player. So I've got him on trial at the moment, because we are a little short on strikers, uh, which is something I mentioned at the weekend. So we have got Cantwell, Moriarty, the Twins, and Jacob, who can also who, who can all play striker. Jacob is the only actual striker. The others all have striker as their second positions or third positions or even fourth positions. So in the case of Cantwell, who looks like this, uh, he's not the best at striking. Uh, is that the best way of saying it? He's not a good striker. He's better off on the wing. I actually want to retrain him, uh, retrain him as a cam, if anything. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, but because of that, um, I am on the lookout for new strikers, and I saw Sadie's name came up, and I remembered that we had him prior, so I thought I'd give him a shot, bring him in on trial, see what his stats are like, uh, and I might actually put him on the bench for this game. Um, I'm going to put him instead of Chowdhury, Akram Chowdhury, and then I'm going to swap out. I'm going to put Macaulay at left back instead of Argent, and I think... Whoops, did not mean to click on read there. 
I think that's my lineup. Although Batten is also. Uh, okay, he should be okay. He should be fine. Anyone in the first team that needs bringing out? Nope. Good. Right. Uh, did I change what I wanted to change? Match. We'll go with. Go with extended. There might be lots of highlights here, of course, but there might not be any at all. We shall see. But yeah, let's get into the game and we'll see how we go. So this is the last preseason friendly before the season kicks off proper. So I'm looking for a really good performance. The uh, The team instructions now is matching up the players a lot more as well. I think we've basically gone away from the G-Gen press, which is what we had before. It's a lot more customized now. In fact, I think it's just described it as custom wing play, which is kind of true. G-Gen is fine in higher leagues. I've never been a fan of the name G-Gen because it really just means high intensity. You might as well just call it high intensity. I think its full name is G-Gen Press or something like that, but I've never been a fan of that. Play your own game and you'll win. Here we go then. The last one before it all starts to matter again. Now, I don't know how many <coughs> of the non-league teams have kits. I'm going to try and get as many kit packs as possible and sort of combine them together to try and make as many of the non-league teams in the game here have their right kits. Because uh, the pack I downloaded, in fact, I'll look at it at net. Ugh. Why can't I talk today? I will look at it now whilst uh, some of the other stuff is happening on the screen and whatnot. So I like the, the 2D kits. I've got the Premier League ones. That's fine. And then the other 2D kits, I've got the Isthmian League, but not the Isthmian Premier. It's some random Isthmian League. I've no idea which. Uh, let me just see what happens here. That's headed away. That's fine. Northern Premier, North, Southern Premier Central, Southern Premier South, Isthmian North, Isthmian South Central, Isthmian South East, and then the Northern Premier Division 1 Central, 1 East, 1 South, and 1 West. And then I've just got another folder that says Lower Leagues. So there's loads of them missing. Oh, that was close from the one there. These are the 2D kits. So the lower league kits, I've got Jersey Bulls 1 and 2, but they both look identical. Then Jersey Bulls 3, Prestwich 1, 2, and then Winsford 1 and 2. I don't think many of these have worked. Uh, for the Premier League, I've got the entirety of the Premier League, which is awesome, including the weird West Brom away in third kits, which I'm not a fan of, but uh, there we are. The, uh, the Newcastle third kit I'm actually wearing right now, so big fan of that. And then the 3D kits uh, for the lower leagues. Again, I'm trying to think. It's the same leagues as I've just read out prior. So there's no, like, Hertfordshire Senior County League or anything like that. And I feel like there's loads missing. So I'm going to try and fill those gaps if I can. We'll see. If anyone has kits uh, and is watching these videos, feel free to get in touch. Because I would love to take those kits off you and put them in the game. With full credit, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm getting frustrated trying to find kits. Because I know there's a lot of licensing issues as well. Which is something I hope gets resolved. But you just don't know right now. Um, teams sort of stamping their foot a little bit. And, you know, intellectual prop Not even intellectual property. But like copyright uh, abuse. Taking someone else's kit and adding it into a pack. Which is, you know, it is the law at the end of the day. So I'm not against that necessarily. But it is slightly inconvenient when you're trying to make a realistic football manager save. But I guess that's me being slightly selfish as well. Uh, let's talk about what's going on on the pitch then. Because we're doing some really nice passing play there. Baker just skewing the shot wide at the end. So that's slightly unfortunate. You can imagine though in a couple of weeks time. Having the full player lineup along the bottom of the screen here. I did try when I created, I had a form that the players filled in where they gave me their stats and date of birth and things like that. And I did ask players to upload photos if they wanted to, um, passport style photos, and most of the ones I got were full body shots, so uh, it didn't quite go to plan. Um, plus, not everyone wanted to upload photos, which is fine. But I think, I think Hatfield this season are doing some new things with matchday program and stuff. I mean, I'm in charge of that, so I should know. Uh, let's just see whether Baker scores this penalty or not. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, dear. Okay, this match isn't going to plan so far. Um, but yeah, one thing I want to do for the matchday programs this coming season, 21-22, is have a squad profile page. So players can write funny facts about themselves. Um, headshots, that kind of thing. Uh, previous clubs, all that good stuff. It's something that I did for Hashtag, for those of you that don't know. Um, Hashtag United's matchday programs last season. 
the um, the player profiles I actually did. I wrote those um, using similar information that the players provided. So it's another string to my bow. Uh, I still love being able to say that, to be honest. It's such a cool thing to be able to say. And to actually be able to do that for Hatfield as well would be awesome. So I haven't run this past John yet. I probably should before I publicly announce it. But yeah, the plan is to do something along those lines. Just to try and get the players out there a little bit more. Um, you know, make them famous. That kind of thing. That was a hell of a ball. What a header. And what a goal. Carter Hudson, Doncaster. What a finish that was. 19 minutes that took. 19 and a half minutes to score that goal. But what a goal that was. And I'm definitely noticing changes now with the way the team's playing. So that was a long ball from Evans. But that felt like a more measured long ball from Evans. It wasn't just a hit and hope. So he kind of gets his head up. Comes forward a little bit. And then he lofts it forward. Picks out Baker. Knocks it down. Hudson, Doncaster with the volley. Brilliant goal. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant goal. Very happy with that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think about all these ideas in the comments as well. Uh, whether you're just a fan of the club, whether you're a fan of me, whether you're a fan of both, whether you're a fan of neither. Let me know if that's the kind of thing you want to see in a match day program. I think it is. It's something I'm personally interested in. I've had a blast doing the program so far. Uh, and I really want to kind of make the club more relatable. Um, that's kind of my goal. So as a football fan... I used to love it as a Stevenage fan where sometimes if a player was injured and they weren't in the squad for that day, they'd actually go and join the fans in the away end uh, if it was an away match or in the home end if it was a home match. And we had times where players would be standing with the uh, the hardcore fans, banging the drum and joining in with the chants. And it just makes it so much nicer. It makes it more community feeling to have the players actually join in like that. You wouldn't get that at a Premier League club. Um, definitely not. Sometimes you get it with... I know like Harry Maguire and Carl Walker have been seen in the, uh, the Sheffield United fans in the past for playoff matches and stuff. Um, and that's fine. But you wouldn't have like... I don't think you'd have Rashford in the Stretford end if he was injured. Um, and that's not a, sl a slight against Rashford by any stretch because I think he's amazing. But what I'm saying is you just don't get that at higher division clubs. Whereas non-league... Um, you do get that personal feeling. You know, the player comes from the town that they play for more often than not. They live just around the corner from the ground. And I want to make the, the players more more relatable, but also give them their, their spot in the program. Um, I, it was a really roundabout way of just saying that. I just want to give them their their dues, really. Their fair, sh their fair shot. Um, and that's what this series is about as well, was just getting the players involved and... and having fans of the club being able to interact with the players in a way that they might not have been able to before. I'm talking a load of rubbish, I know. I, I hear it too. Um, but yeah, having their player photos, that's where I was going with all this, having their player photos along the bottom bar. So you'll have players like McCauley, who's a regen, but have a player, uh, have a photo of like Sadler alongside him and you wouldn't be able to tell that that's an AI-generated face. It, it would look almost identical in terms of quality. That is the plan, but we'll see how well that goes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, Hudson Doncaster running through there. He's meant to be dribbling less. I think I had that as his setup, at least. Uh, yeah. So, he perhaps should have passed that a little bit earlier. That's a good catch from Extents. As I said, this is pretty much the lineup that I'm going to have for the first game of the season. I might swap Nash in for McCauley, but I'm really happy to bring these youth players through. They've all proved their worth. Um, which is something I was saying in Saturday's stream. They've they've all played exceptionally well. Cantwell especially and Jacob both getting on the score sheet every match. Um, players like Stone as well and, and McLean and um, Batten also starting to stamp their authority on the midfield. <coughs> it's going to be really exciting this season. And I am going to keep those players as, as regens. And we'll have them as our first youth intake. So that there are other grade out players in the under-23s right now that will have um, their stats changed and their names changed and things to reflect the youth team. And there's always going to be... Oh, that's a good finish from Baker. I thought he was offside then, so I kept talking. But no, he's onside. Hammond with a little up and under for him to run onto there as well. Um, there will always be plenty of new players coming through in the under-18s. Because every time you move a player out of the under-18s, if it's below a certain amount, a new player is generated to... Uh, to replace them so there will always be a conveyor belt coming through um, but I just feel like these players are too good to then that's a nice volley so it over the shoulder as well it's beautiful and there's too many good players who've come through in this youth intake to just have them be replaced by real life people I, I also think that does a disservice to the real life people 
um, because then the stats get changed anyway. So I think, yeah, these players will remain as they are. I think that's for the benefit of everybody, to be honest. All right. Henson with the pass to... I didn't actually see who that was. Flatley now with the ball forward. That's an easy one for extents. So, yeah, stats-wise, it looks like we're dominating once again. Uh, and that, if Gonzalez Velasco gets it, which he does, that's a pretty good take. If he crosses it, he does. Baker went for the right-footed shot. That looked like it was going wide anyway. I think he'd have been better letting that roll across onto his left. He didn't need to take it as quickly as he did either. You see here, a little bit of an overrun. I think Gonzalez Velasco took one touch too many as well. But a left-foot finish into that bottom right corner would have been the preferred option there. McCauley with the throw to Studholm. Back to McCauley. Crossing it in. Baker's header offside, but the keeper saved it anyway. Good goalkeeping there. It was a nice cross as well from McCauley. I'm really liking him right now as well. He's doing some exceptional stuff. The fact that he can play left back and right back as well. We're going to struggle to hold on to him. That is a valuable commodity. And he can play both almost as well as, as each other as well. So I think left back is his first choice. Right back is like his secondary position. So he's not as good at right back. And he has to play as an inverted wing back or an inverted full back. Um, when he plays at right back. But I don't mind that because you can match the other tactics around it. So that's one thing. I don't do it much here right now, but in my previous save that I still play on FM20, um, I actually have uh, an inverted, or I had an inverted winger on the left-hand side. So to match that, I had a, a complete wing back at left back. And they really did complement each other really, really nicely. It was very good to see. So um, I will start looking at doing that as well. So we might end up having pairs. So for example, <coughs> excuse me. If we have someone playing right attacking midfield, like Chowdhury, who's a bit more attacking, then we might have someone behind him also be a bit more attacking so they can overlap each other. Same on the left, of course, with um, Studholm and someone like Argent. But also Studholm on the left plays as an inverted winger. So you would have someone playing more as a wing back on that side. So when the inverted winger comes inside with the ball, the wing back can overlap and fill that space on the left hand flank. That's the plan, at least. It doesn't always work as well as that, but that is the plan. Uh, so for the data, then, I mean, Harding is doing very well tracking forward there. We've got a nice little smiley face along the uh, the back four there. They're kind of breaking the line, but not too much. They've only had four shots, three on target. So, you know, Extents is having things to do. He's not bored. I am going to make some subs now at half halftime. Uh, who's knackered? So Hudson Doncaster, that, he pretty much lives knackered. So we'll bring him off and we'll bring um, Hollis on to start with in the cam. I'm also going to bring Harding off and actually I'm going to bring Batten on to play there. Uh, I am going to lean slightly more towards these youth players as well when it comes to friendlies. Bringing them on in competitive matches. Obviously I'll bring on the senior players first unless there is a really good young bright prospect coming through like Jacob for example. Uh, or if we absolutely have to rest Baker, then Jacob will be the favoured option there. But in some cases, like Batten instead of Gadger, it just feels like a better option for a friendly because it gets them valuable minutes. And in fact, I talked about bringing on Jacob. I'm actually going to reverse that decision. and I'm going to bring on Sadie and play as a pressing forward set to attack. I think he's best position is is defense yeah pressing forward defend but I mean I suppose I could do that this is his chance to impress so I've got him on trial for a little bit and I might have him play for the under 23s for a bit just to see how well he does but overall um, I'm just keeping an eye on him right now not necessarily signing him so Welling have also made quite a few subs. Here come ours. We made four, I think. Yeah. Good block there from Batten, and here's Gonzalez Velasco, and that's the end of the highlight. 
Now, I would like to see some goals in the second half as well, because we don't do that very often. I'm also going to bring Gadger on, uh, off and Christy on. Uh, Hammond off, sorry, and Christy on. I'm having a real brain fart day, apparently. Real brain fart day. Uh, Culver with the ball to McEwen. Ruiz closing down. Good challenge from Ruiz. And if Studholm can keep that in play, that'd be great. He doesn't, but Frederick does. Sadie now doing his press. That's what a pressing forward does. Clues in the name, of course. Yeah, he's just closing down those defenders, keeping them honest, keeping them on their toes. Maybe forcing a mistake, which would be awesome. That's a foul from Evans, is it? No, apparently not. And a two with the ball forward. Gonzalez Velasco looked like he was onside there. He gets the pull back. He wins the corner instead. That's okay. I don't mind that, playing for the set piece. He had Sadie running in, though. We've now got Christie on the corner here. To Gonzalez Velasco. There is one more thing, actually, that I wanted to talk about in this video. And I know I said I wouldn't keep messing with the player's stats. But there's one more thing I want to try, just to create a more balanced playing field. And I want to take all of the player's uh, current ability and reduce it by five. And the reason I want to do that is just as an experiment to see if that actually changes their current stats. I don't think it will, but it will affect how they progress in the future. It might make no difference whatsoever in the reality of things, but some of the older players I think it will affect more than others. But I just want to mess around with things like that a little bit as an experiment just to see what happens. I'm not anticipating anything massive will happen. But I'm curious. So we'll go with it and we'll see what happens. I will always change it back. That's why I'm doing it by a set number right now. So I can change it back to what it was if it doesn't work for whatever reason. Um, I don't have a left winger. So I'm actually going to bring Jacob on to play left midfield. Purely because I have no one else. So we've got Tuttle coming on for Sadler. Um, Jacob coming on for stud home. Did I make another one? I didn't. I should make another one, really, shouldn't I? Uh, I'm also going to praise the players in a second as well, once the ball goes out of play again. Which should happen anytime soon, I hope. Two with a nice little chest down there, finding Evans. He's played it forward. So we are still playing these long balls, but they feel a lot more measured. Like, that wasn't a bad pass. Gonzalez Velasco had to fight for it. It wasn't a bad pass. That wasn't a bad header from Sadie, either. Just unlucky it went over the top. There's a replay of that, then. There's a nice cross, actually, from Juan. Finds Sadie wide open in the middle, then. Just couldn't get his head over the ball. Alright, subs made. Uh, we'll give everyone a praise. And then I'm also going to swap a two off and Newman on. I didn't see who that was with the chance there, but it went just wide. Um, Gonzalez Velasco off. Oops. There we go. Gonzalez Velasco off. And I'm going to bring Raman Lewis on just to give him some minutes. And then in a little bit, extents off and Murray on. There we are. <clears throat> So it looks like Evans is playing the full 90 because I didn't bring another centre-back. Uh, although that's... Actually, no. Hang on a sec. I can still do this. I can swap Hollis with Evans. And then bring on Gadger for Evans. There we are. Confirm. Nice. Alrighty then. Um, so yeah. Impressive performance. Very impressive performance. Nice little 2-0 win currently. It might go to 3, might go to 2-1. Who knows? But we've seen out the preseason nicely. We lost twice at the start, which against bigger teams, I'm really not that upset about, to be honest. The fact that we even scored a goal against Newport County, I will take that as a win. Um, and yeah, going into the season now, I'm very much looking forward to getting started against Stockfold. So I'm going to tweak the players between now and then. I might set up one more friendly if I've got room in the schedule if not then we'll have to experiment in the stop fold game 
So it'll be a case of we'll see what happens. I'd like to try and not do that though. So if I can organise a friendly, I will. Just to get that last experimentation done. And we'll see how the squad adapts to the new um, ability. So Baker man of the match. I think that's fine. You know, he scored a very, very, very good goal. Uh, plus he also got the assist for Hudson Doncaster's goal. The data here... I mean, they had chances. That's the thing. They did have chances. It wasn't a complete sweep for us. We had 31 shots, 11 on target, I suppose. So it's kind of a clean sweep. But they had six and five. We did have five times as many shots as them. Uh, how did we only get 11 on target? That's insane. Six corners. Um, expected goals of 3.72. So that's disappointing because we only scored twice. But we did mess things up a little bit. Uh, mix things around in the second half. We brought Sadie on. He only played a 6.6, .6, but then him playing as a pressing forward set to defend might not be the best thing to do when you've only got one up front. So we'll see about that. Maybe if he had Hudson Doncaster behind him, it would work a lot better. But I'm not too upset. I'm not too upset. And Jacob playing slightly out of position, still getting a 6.9 is also good. Christie got a 7, which is great because he only played like 30, 40 minutes. Um, so we'll keep the players happy there. Hopefully we've got no clubs coming in to poach our players, which is actually another reason why I want to lower the current abilities because I think it will just stop the uh, the vultures from circling a little bit. Let me just have a look quickly if I can organise one more friend. Oh, yeah, I've got loads of time. I've got a whole week. Okay. I'm going to get two matches then. Um, one of which I'm going to play against a smaller team or a nearby team. Let's go with like Watson Park. And then here I want to play a team like... Uh, I'm going to say Dover again. I might organise an uh, annual friendly against Dover. Because that's where the missus is from. So we'll make a regular thing out of that. And then we'll leave the Tuesday slot here and we'll just go for the Saturday when we play there. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation with the player's stats. Um, just lowering the current ability. I just want to advance quickly to see if those friendlies are accepted. Good stuff. Uh, oh yeah, and this is me looking to see if there are any Steamage players that I can get on loan. But I don't think there is. Alrighty then, folks. Thank you very much for watching then. I'll let you know at the weekend how well the experiment went. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it goes very, very well indeed. Um, and then I'll let you know whether the players are either as they were changed to or as they were before they were changed. We'll, we'll see about that uh, afterwards as well. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you're enjoying the series so far, drop some comments down below with ideas for tactics and all that good stuff. Um, any ideas about you know where to get kits from as well would be good or play, uh, team logos or even face packs for existing players. So... <clears throat> I need to update my face packs as well. That might be something I was in the process of doing, actually. Uh, was getting that done. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, um, besides all that good stuff, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.